six on the second of a back-to-back this time down in Beale Street in Memphis taking on the Grizzlies the Road Warriors would come out slow but they would pick things up man led by the second unit Derrick Rose welcome back Alec Burks manual quickly Nick's second unit got the offense back cooking and they would take a 17 point lead into the fourth quarter so when you thought that the Knicks would coast you already know they were in a world of pain because the Grizzlies would cut this thing down all the way to five. Lackluster ball movement, lackluster defense would help bring the Grizzlies back into this, man. So where would we go when we needed to close this thing out? It was Derrick Rose, ladies and gentlemen. The former MVP would come back into the game with four minutes left to play and close with six critical points to put the team on his back in crunch time in the clutch and help deliver the Knicks a victory 24 points last night 24 points tonight now this man has to be in six man of the year conversations Knicks win 118 to 104 Road Warriors 2 and 0 on the trip this is Knicks post game live presented by Manscaped CP franchise Ashley Moss in the building. Ash, we did it again. We back, did it again. Back to back. Wow, <laughs> what a win! What a win! Derrick Rose, man, we got to we got to start the show off with Derrick Rose because you know when when this trade first happened, it was uh, it was a cheap move. I, I love the move mm-hmm. because it was a cheap move, but you know it's two things. I didn't expect his impact to be this immense, and I didn't think that this team would still be here in the fourth spot. I thought they would be hovering around playing, trying to get in because of how tough the second half schedule has been. But make no mistake, Derrick Rose has been the X factor for this Nick team in the second half. They're now 21-8 and since the D-Rose trade with him in the lineup. And he was spectacular tonight. 25 points after after dropping 24 last night. 25 points tonight to help bring us home. What do you think about this game? Yeah, listen, you know, when Derrick Rose first um, joined the team, one of my concerns was how it was going to affect the young guys. You know, I was concerned that, you know, he would take minutes away from guys, him for their development, because, you know, him and Tibbs do have a pre-standing or pre-existing rather relationship. So I'm so excited. And again, I'll keep saying it until the end of the season, till the end of time. I'm so excited that I was wrong. He has yeah. just been incredible in this team, not only as a leader, but also in his own right. Yeah. Um, it's just amazing to see him just have like this revival in his career. And I'm just glad that it could be with the New York Knicks. Um, yeah. it, he is the MVP right now of this game. Um, he was the reason that we were able to stay in. And obviously, Julius Randle does Julius Randle yeah. thing night in and night out. But Derek Rose, man, he is just playing incredible basketball. He is the reason that we were in this game tonight. He kept us in it. He keeps the young guys, you know, he keeps them level. He keeps them focused along with Julius. But I just think that, you know, Derek Rose just has a different hold on these guys. And, you know, whatever he's doing, whatever he's narrowed it in, zeroed in, it's working. Put him on his back. This team is completely different when Derek Rose is in the lineup, when he's in the equation. I mean, the efficiency, 11 of 15. Three of five from downtown, plus 16 on the night. And the, and the interesting thing about this was, and we'll, we'll talk about Burks and his impact, was that at the five-minute mark when, when Tibbs subbed out Rose, I didn't know if he was going to come back in the game. Because at that point, the offense was gassed. Defensively, they were just bringing the Grizzlies back. I mean, Grizzlies were sleepwalking on the offensive end, and the Knicks were still allowed them to come back into the game. But offensively, we were just gassed. We were settling for one-on-one shots. Julius was playing hero ball. RJ Rose, they, they were gassed. So he goes to Burks, right? Burks gets hurt. Scary injury. Hopefully he's okay and he bounces yeah. back in the Phoenix game. So Rose comes back in with 14 with 413 left, Knicks are up by five. And he closes the door with six points. And and the thing is, is that when the Knicks have gotten into these clutch crunch time situations late in games, prior to the Rose trade, and, and we saw it was Julius, you know, playing that hero ball and and uh you know he wasn't executing. And we were like, 
Who's going to be that second guy to step up? This is where D. Rose comes into play, especially when we're going to be talking about playoffs and whatnot going down the road. Because now you have another option to help you close these games, to help you get easier buckets. Maybe he gets Julius easier buckets in crunch time. But at the very least, you can rely on him to get his own and help close the game. And that's what he did tonight. Yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm somebody who, you know, always says what's on her mind. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And I have no yeah. problem admitting that when it comes to Derrick Rose and what he has meant to this team, what he means to this team, I was dead wrong. And I've never been more happy to be wrong. And I'll keep saying it. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's really it's just really incredible. I mean, you were for this season, at least. I mean, again. We're not a complete team. We still have holes that we need to fill. I don't think any Knicks fan is going to go ahead and deny that. But Derrick Rose really was the piece yeah. that we were missing to be competitive this season. Big and time. I still think, you know, like I said, we still have other things that we need to focus on in the offseason. But it really is just he was the piece that we were missing. Not Like I said, yeah. not only for, you know, what he brings to the table, but what he's able to do for people like Quickly young guys on the team and yeah. it really has helped Julius Randle especially with the inconsistencies of young players which you know is not to their fault it happens that's just kind of the name of the game when you're dealing with young guys you're gonna get a lot of up and down play for him, from them yeah. but Derrick Rose has really kind of emerged as the Batman or the Robin to Julius Randle's Batman and yeah it's great to have that you know what I mean and it, it's great to see it unfold before my very eyes big time Big time, big time. What a performance by him. Uh, can't say enough about him. He, he was great. He was major. A uh, couple other questions that, you know, a qu couple other storylines that um, that were, were coming about in this game was the return of Alec Burks. Burks mm. coming back from COVID. Uh, you know, Tibbs was saying that he was working on his condition and didn't play last night. Tonight he came in and he started coasting early. I thought he was part of the reason, you know, why that second unit helped bring us back into the game because we started the game off slow. Uh, it took us a while to even get our first points on the board. But once Burks quickly and Rose got into to the game, things changed. And Burks, he finished with nine points, four, seven from the field, one for one from downtown. But it was good to see him get back into the groove on untimely injury when John Morant rolled up on his knee. So you got to hope that he he comes back up to speed because I love the chemistry that uh, yeah. that that unit, those three guards have with with that second unit, along with the more confident Obi Toppin. That's going to be very important as we as we segue to the playoffs. And Obi's looking confident out there each and every game. He's yeah. starting to kind of find his swagger and the little, you know, moments that we do see him. Back on the Burks topic, you know, the, the question was, once he returned, how would Tibbs handle this guard rotation between Burks, IQ, Rose, and Alfred Payton, especially when it came to the second half? And we saw that in the fourth quarter. Payton played the third, and... You know, he, he forced it a lot in the third, but I also thought he played hard. He had some tough moments out there. He, he was physical, maintained his aggressiveness against John Moran all night. I thought Peyton, by and large, played tough, had a couple rough spots in the, in the in the third. But in the fourth, like I said, when Rose got gassed and Tibbs went to the bench, he went to Burks. He went to Burks at the point. Yeah. So Listen, I feel, that, that's I feel something like... to watch going forward. Yeah, I mean, Burks, I mean, if he is coming off of, you know, COVID protocol, which, of course, we don't, um, you know, that's private. That's not something that the teams or the players have to even yeah. disclose. I mean, you can kind of go ahead and make an educated guess but based on the time that they miss and things like that. But if he does or if he is coming off of COVID, um, it's going to take him a while to get acclimated. It's, it's a good sign that he was out there playing, though, because, you know, remember what happened with D. Rose. Um you know, it took him a while to kind of get back into the swing of things that affected yeah. him differently. So hopefully, you know, Burks, um, clearly it didn't affect him the same way he was able to get out there and play. But now mm -hmm. with the injury or the possible injury, that's going to be something that, you know, keep an eye on. It's concerning because he does go ahead and give you another offensive weapon off the bench. Yeah, you know, that it is getter. something that, you know, you need, especially on this West Coast trip, you need the scoring help. The defense is there. Yeah. You know, the yeah. scoring is where your weak spot is. So any other additional scoring help that you can go ahead and get is only going to be beneficial to winning games. So hopefully it's just a little bit of a, a tweak um, yeah, that he, hope so. he sustained in this game. And it's not going to keep him out long-term, you know? Oh, hope so. Hope so. Another story from this game was uh, how are we going to uh, battle Valanchunas with one big man down? No, Noel, no Nerlens Noel tonight. So it was Taj's turn. Taj stepped up like the vet. 
battle Valanchunas all night. Todd would finish with six points, 12 boards, five block shots. I thought Norvell Pell came in and gave us some good minutes. He would finish with three block shots. Only thing with Taj, you know, he, he would finish with four fouls, but I thought he picked up his third and fourth. It, it just, on, on some bad plays, those are some bad fouls. Got lucky that uh, he didn't end up fouling out of the game. And he would end up finishing. But I thought Taj gave us some some very uh, good, solid effort on, on the defensive end and on the boards, battling Valanchunas. Mm -hmm. And that was major. In the first matchup with the Grizzlies, um, the Grizzlies finished with 64 points in the paint at MSG. Tonight, only 34. So I thought that was a big difference as well. We were able to keep him at the paint. He didn't have much of a, a aggressive John Moran as he did in the first game. Not sure. You know, I thought part of that was Peyton being aggressive with him, but part of that, I didn't think John Morant was really into this game like that. But, hey, we, we got the W. Yeah, I mean, listen, our defense, <laughs> people, listen, people don't want to give credit where credit is due, but the New York Knicks defense is nothing to play with. I mean, yeah. you can see John Morant was frustrated yeah. out there. End up like, getting tossed. Him that, and the coach the got tossed coach out of there. was frustrated yeah. out there. Yeah. Like, we were not letting them breathe. Every time they thought they were going on a run, we were right there to kind of put a wrench in that situation. Yeah. And it was starting to it was starting to get to him. I mean, John Morant, I, I don't think I can remember the last time I saw a game where he was ejected from a game. Mentally deflated, so man. Took him was, out of his not game. Not only did you get him in the game physically, you got him as mental, yeah, which sometimes yeah. is the worst place that you can kind of lose your cool as a player because sometimes that's worse than getting somebody in your space constantly they're just constantly in your head yeah so yeah memphis was big mad tonight <laughs> big man big man they were big mad. yeah yeah but they fought you know like i said we we had a 17 point lead going into the fourth quarter and and uh dylan brooks give credit he was on fire i don't know if that i think julius was checking him part of the time but we left him open we, we were leaving desmond bain a flamethrower wide open out there. So that defense needs to tighten up, man, because, like I said, the Grizzlies were, were mostly sleepwalking in, on the offensive end, especially without Ja being a catalyst. But we still gave up a, a, a too many easy threes for them, and, and so they were able to capitalize and cut this thing to five before Rose ended up winning the game. Julius had a big step back three during that, during that final four minutes as well, so give credit to him. Also, yeah. yo, the three-point... And the three well, point adding shooting to that, adding to that real quick yeah, like yeah. that's gonna be and that's why i always say you know defense that's why i'm such a big fan of defense when it comes to the game because yeah. i know it's it's one it always travels but two when you're accustomed and this is a shooting league this yeah. league is led by shooters so when you're accustomed to being in a league or playing teams that make defense kind of a, an afterthought and really it's about putting up points and chucking up shots and things mm -hmm. like that you're accustomed to having a certain amount of space. You're comf you're accustomed to having a certain level of comfort to get your shots up, right? The Knicks play an old school way of basketball that kind of has just gone to the wayside yeah. as the league has started to change. They're annoying. Like they're annoying to somebody yeah. to shooters Physical in a shooting team too. league. They don't let you breathe. The shots that you're accustomed to getting off, you can't get off. So it kind of restricts you from going in the paint because they're going to bully you. Yeah. It restricts those mid-range shots because they're going to bully you. Like, it really restricts you to those long-range jumpers that are so inaccurate, unless you're like a Steph Curry who can hit them with your eyes closed. It really just restricts an entire offense or part of an offense for a team. And you saw that today. When someone's not used to playing physical, the next resort is to get angry because yeah. it's like, let me breathe, Got let me frustrated. work. So Got a lot frustrated. of teams are going to have an issue – with the New York Knicks, because this is a physical basketball team when it comes to that defense. Yeah, 100, 100. Before we go, we got to hear from our guy, the closer. I'm so excited. He said he doesn't call on bum nights, but this was a big night, so we were expecting to hear from him. Jay Boogie from North Carolina, what's going on, my man? Good. <laughs> That's the roll call. I'm going to do it again for us. Good. Yeah, last night was... Was this totally bum call? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I wasn't gonna come in. Nah. Houston got their own name, Rock. So you know, won't no need to come in there and Simple. call last night. Yeah, Let's yeah. jump on straight over to Memphis. Let's go. But hold up though, let me send some shout outs real quick. Okay. Shout out to everybody that made phone calls tonight, right? Shout out to everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's rocking with this orange and blue. Yeah. Shout out to the whole chat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And shout out to everybody that's in state, out of state, out of country, yeah. wherever you at. And shout out to all the men that's locked down doing time. Can't 
way for you to get home, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And shout out to my team, you know what I'm saying? You see them right there on the glass. Nah, we ain't talking about Bunny and Clyde. That's my Thomasina Bush ride right there. <laughs> that shout out to Chuck D. I know what he's, he said. I know he know what I'm saying when I say Thomasina Bush ride. And shout out to James Dolan. Yeah, that's right. That's the big homie, the blueprint. He got it completely right this right. This time right here, we on one. Shout out to Leon Rose, you know what I'm saying? He doing the right thing. He had to put together the whole squad. And shout out to World Wide West. And shout out to Tom Thiddle. It was a beautiful and great sight just to see them two, them laughing and giggling, getting along, you know, hugging and, and showing the love and appreciation. And then you see Perry come through. Shout out to Perry too, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to all those in that office and everything. And shout out to the whole Orange and Blue, the New York Nick team. But this is a great, great turnaround, you know what I'm saying? This is playoff basketball, what you learn and seen tonight. Because anytime when you ain't getting no calls and it's just man on man, ain't no skills, no sets, no court, no plays, no nothing, ain't no referees blowing no whistles, ain't no TV timeouts, it's man on man. It's a fight. This was a fight tonight, you know what I'm saying? This is what you call the Tommy Hearns may, and, and Marvin Hagler. May he rest in peace. But I'm glad we was on the Marvin side and knocked him straight out the box, you know what I'm saying? This is how you handle your business, and this is how you get ready for playoff basketball. That's, right. That's the next turn that we taking. Yeah, I got another broom, matter of fact. Take this broom right there and sweep yourself off your own floor, Memphis. That's right, another broom. How about that? We don't got a lot of brooms this year. We handling our business. You got to love and appreciate everything that's going on, man. We come a long way from, you know what I'm saying, to get and reach this point right here. All the way from the beginning of the season when we was having the Dallas been telling y'all about this top eight, you know what I'm saying? Maybe yeah, I need to sure. switch it up and chop four of them in half and just start calling the top four, you know what I'm saying? Because that's where we sitting at. And I don't think we're trying to re- relinquish that right there going on. Yeah, you heard my man just called, you know what I'm saying, for Philly a few minutes ago. Yeah, I'm, I'm riding with him all the way. We get ready to smack Denver across the helmet, you know what I'm saying? Wednesday night, you know what I'm saying? Everything is a big time going on game right there. And you got to love it. You got to appreciate it. Uh, I want the smoke. Ashley said she wants the smoke. She calling out Mark. I know, I know what CP get ready to do. You know what I'm saying? The maximum. Mark. So man, I guess I might as well call him out too. Yeah, Steve, I call you out too. I want some smoke. You know what I'm saying? Cause you ain't been, you ain't been riding with us the whole time. Don't ride and get on the wagon now. You won't ride at the beginning. You won't do all them late nights and all them phone calls and all them debates and all them challenges. Late hours, you know what I'm saying? Hoping and praying, yeah. getting us on the whole time. Y'all just getting on the wagon right now. We don't need y'all. This is for the real ones. The real ones on the Knicks Man TV show. The real other podcasts. The ones that stay up late night and going there while y'all listening. Y'all laying down resting, waiting to go up in your offices. <laughs> now nah, we low, we low key right now on the streets with this right here. Yes. And you got to love and appreciate right here. You know what I'm saying? It don't get no better than this right here. You got to love it. You got to appreciate it, man. And everybody continue on doing what you're doing. Love yourself. Protect yourself. Love your loved ones. You know what I'm saying? The thing is out there. Fathers. Mother, fathers, father your kids. Mothers, mother your kids. Fathers, love your wives. Wives, love your fathers. Build that family. Yeah. Build that foundation. Just like the Knicks, we got that foundation right there. I told you about that house. You got to have the model. You got to have the semi-blocks. You got to have the bricks. And that's how you put together that family home, you know what I'm saying? We here right now. We all one. And keep doing what y'all doing. And I appreciate and love everybody in the chat, man. God bless you all, man. And I see y'all Wednesday night right after Denver. Yo, if you don't like this orange and blue, yeah, while we out in Denver, go ride with that Bronco. Because this right here, that New York flavor right here. Yeah. Like now, say, here, he, here, he. Here, he, here, he. And as usual, the church says, amen. Amen. (laughs) Closing it out like a pro. Jay Boogie from North Carolina. Throw some fives in the chat. That's what we wanted. like that orange and blue, you better go ride with the Broncos. You better ride with the Broncos. Simple and plain, Ash. Simple and plain. Nothing else to say. Jay Boogie puts the bow on things. 12 or 13. The Road Warriors are getting it done. On to Denver. (laughs) 